Well, hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God's with you exactly in the place where you are. Let's go straight to the scriptures. Let's look at how much God wants to send the Holy Spirit into our life to work in power. In Luke chapter 11, verse 9, it says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given. So ask, given. Search, you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you if your child asks for a fish will give a state snake instead of a fish? Of course not. You'd give what your child wanted, wouldn't you? Or if the child asks for an egg, we'll give them a scorpion. Of course not. You'd give the child what they wanted. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If you then who are evil, what it really is saying is for you then who are not perfect, human beings, I'm not perfect, um, know how to give good gifts to your, to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? God the Father desires greatly to give the Holy Spirit to us. Uh, now, I'm going to tell a story and you've got to make, make sure that you don't miss the point of today because I fear for some of you, this will distract you. Night before last, I uh, got woken up at three o'clock in the morning by Rosemary. Uh, she said to me, uh, I'm in pain. And I said, what do you mean in pain? She said, I'm in pain in my stomach. I've been in pain. I, it's been there since nine o'clock. I haven't been asleep. Uh, and... Uh, and I asked her what I could do, and she said there was nothing I could do. And, and then soon I began to hear her beginning to throw up, to get sick. And, uh, and I didn't know what to do. And then at 20 past four in the morning, she walked into the room and she said, you need to take me to hospital straight away. Well, if you know Rosemary, she has an incredible pain threshold. And if Rosemary says she needs to go to the hospital, she really needs to go to the hospital. Within minutes, we were in the car and we were heading in the direction of the hospital. Now, where we are, hospitals, because of COVID, don't allow any visitors, anyone to accompany you into the hospital, uh, into the emergency section of the hospital, and they've closed down the visiting hours to only a few, a little time each day. I get to the emergency section of the hospital and a security guard met me, said, sir, you can't park here. I said to him, can I go in with my wife? He said, no, you won't be able to. And immediately Rosemary got out of the car and she walked in. I got out and I gave her a hug and a kiss and she went in. And, 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 the, and the gentleman said, you've got to go now. You can't stay here. And I remember thinking to myself, what am I going to do? Do I sit in the car park and wait? Uh, they told me that the, the, the wait before you saw a doctor was 10 up hours. Some people have been waiting for 10 hours. Um, incredible, hey? And... Uh, and I didn't know what to do. So eventually I did wander home because I didn't know what to do. And I, and I waited and I didn't hear anything for about five hours. And then a message came through to say that Rosemary hadn't seen a doctor as yet, but she had seen a nurse. They'd given her something for pain, painkillers and they'd given her something to stop her throwing up as violently as she had been. Well, a few hours went by and it was now after lunchtime and I got a message through to say that she was going off to have scans. And uh, a couple of hours went by later and then I got another message to say, uh, a message to say that from Rosemary herself to say that it was appendicitis and that in 40 to 45 minutes time, she was going into surgery. She'd been prepped for surgery, but her appendicitis had gone and uh, it wasn't good. Anyway, I, I, the visiting hours at the hospital were between five and seven. And they said, you will not be allowed into the hospital at any other time because of COVID, whereas before it used to be all day. I turn up there at five o'clock and I walk into the room where she had eventually been put uh, and two nurses were in there. And uh, I said to the two nurses, taking, taking Rosemary's blood pressure, I said to the nurses, um, uh, how, how long has she been back since surgery? And they said, oh no, she hasn't been into surgery yet. There's been delays, there's been emergencies and she's just been bumped down. And, and, and they were in the room for just a minute and they walked out and I just looked at her and I said, how are you doing? And I wouldn't have been in the room for two minutes. And they walked back in and said, oh, they're here. They're here to take Rosemary off to surgery. And I saw Rosemary for the grand total of two minutes. And then they rolled her away. And the nurse said, well, sir, you'll need to leave the hospital now. Uh, you know, as soon as it gets to seven o'clock, you have to leave the hospital. And I said, can't I wait to, for her to come out of surgery? They said, no. Uh, someone will call you and tell you how the surgery went. Well, I didn't know what to do. It was seven o'clock in the evening. I just went driving for about two hours. And I drove just all, I just sat in the, and I just drove literally around town for two hours. Sounds silly, I know. I didn't know what to do. 
Um, I just wanted to talk to her to make sure she was okay. And then just before nine o'clock, I get a phone call from the hospital to say that Rosemary has been through the surgery. The surgery has been successful. She's back in a room. She's asleep from the anesthetic, uh, but all has gone well. And that tomorrow, the next day, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, I can go and visit her, but I will not be allowed in before then. Well, right through the night goes through, there was no messages, nothing at all came through. And all I wanted to do was to go and be with her. All I've wanted to do was go and be with her. All I've wanted to do was go hold her hand and make sure she's okay. And I can't. And as at this moment of recording, it's just before 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I haven't seen her yet. Um, and everything in me just wants to go and see her right now. Uh, you know, and, and yet it's not possible. Um, but please God, she's all okay. And I'm gonna go there as soon as I have done this and talk to you uh, today. Uh, have a look at this in the scriptures. Now don't miss my point for the story. Have a look at this in the scriptures. It says in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, if you then who are evil, if you then who are human being, frail, know how to give good gifts to your children, you know, and what are good gifts? It's talking about food, the very sustenance of life. How much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? How much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? All of us who are parents, we know what it's like when our children come and tell us that they're hungry, we want to feed them. And it's a basic thing within us. If you've ever been around young mums when their children want to be fed, it's, it, it's their priority of which it could, could be. Young dads, it's their priority to get them fed. Uh, it's like other things have to come second to it. I invite my children, we, Rosemary and I occasionally invite our children over and they will, and they will say to us, uh, they will say to us, um, uh, we can't come, it's dinner time. We're feeding the children. And it's that basic urge to do. But yet, it, it, Scripture says, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Just like right now, everything in me wants to go and see Rosemary. It's just big within me. It's, you know, just to hold her hand, to give her a kiss, to make sure she's okay. God, our Father, wants to give the Holy Spirit to you even more. The Holy Spirit that gives us power, the Holy Spirit that gives us life, the Holy Spirit that gives us the ability to be what we can't be ourselves. The Holy Spirit who is God, the third person in, of the Trinity, that, that God the Father wants us to live in God, not just at a theory level, not just at a, some mysterious level, but at a real level where we would experience the power of God in our life. It's, it, the Holy Spirit is what works through us, that guides us and leads us to God. And my point to you today is simply this. Don't miss it for the story. Rosemary and I will be okay. Is the desire of God is so deep and so incredible that you would have the Holy Spirit in your life and that the Holy Spirit would be usable in your life. Not just at some airy fairy magic thing behind almost, which we don't give the Holy Spirit any credit for or to do, but the Holy Spirit wants to be in our life, work in our life, live in our life. And for us to know God, to know God with everything that's within us, the Holy Spirit does that. It reveal, The Holy Spirit reveals God to us. If you hear anything for me today, the desire of God is for you to know him and to have the Holy Spirit in power in your life. I pray that you're here today. Don't be distracted by the story. We'll be okay. But what God wants for you. And so today, ask the Holy Spirit into your life more deeply. That you would experience his power, his majesty, his glory, his wonder in your life today. So that you can live a life of power, of impact, of freedom and purpose, which God intends for you. Well, in talking about Rosemary, on the 18th of June, Rosemary is, runs our, our women's ministry called the Heart Women's Ministry. Uh, and uh, it's a great ministry for women and many of you have already participated in activities. On the 18th of June, Rosemary is le releasing a message, a, a one day message for everybody on that day called the Heart Hour, the Heart Hour. It's a one hour message and it'll be released on the 18th of June. 
I, I want to encourage you, why don't you go and register at this address to receive it? Men or women can receive this message from Rosemary. I'll say this about Rosemary, and I'm not just saying this because of our circumstance today. Many of you have heard me say this. Rosemary is the holiest person I've ever met. She's more dedicated to God. She's more committed to God. And she knows what it is to live with the Holy Spirit in her life. And the heart, the heart owl will bless you because of her heart and her experience of God. Why don't we pray today? And let's pray for Rosemary. Let's pray for all of us who have needs uh, right now. I'm going to go to uh, Holy, the Holy Spirit book, which we've talked about in recent times. And let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From my head to my heart, across the entirety of my life, may the power and the victory of the cross be upon me and in me today. Holy Spirit, Jesus promised that you would come into each of our lives and come upon the church who are God's people. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come to each of us today. Holy Spirit, you are God. You were sent from God our Father and Jesus your Son to me. Fill me more deeply with your presence. You are wanted in my life. You are welcome in my life. You are needed in my life. Holy Spirit, deepen my knowledge and personal relationship with you. You are the power of God alive in me. You are the strength of God within me. You are the enabler of God within me. Holy Spirit, you enable me to hear the voice of God in my heart. Holy Spirit, you enable me to respond to the voice of God in my heart. Holy Spirit, you enable me to act according to the voice of God in my heart. Holy Spirit, you enable me to love in keeping with the voice of God in my heart. Holy Spirit, lead me in truth. Holy Spirit, guide me in wisdom. Holy Spirit, strengthen me in courage. And Father God, we ask, Holy Spirit, come upon us in power and have your will in me. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. I'm going to see Rosemary now. And I pray that all is good. God bless you. See you tomorrow. And I pray that today, that there'd be a longing in your heart for the Holy Spirit today. God bless you. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.